other minute before we get started. Um, just to let some more people join. So please come on in. All right, guys, it looks like we have everyone here. So I want to welcome everyone to this orientation webinar. We're very excited to have you join us. Um, this, this webinar is going to be an introduction to the Career Center um, at the University of Utah. So it's a really exciting topic. And we have with us a special guest from the Career and Professional Development Center. Her name is Olga Kingsbury, and she is a career coach in their office. And she is going to be sharing some helpful tips and tricks and information with you all about finding employment um, within your uh, F1 visa uh, regulations and what types of resources exist for you on our campus to help with that. So without further ado, I will pass it over to Olga to get started. Hi everyone, um, I'm very excited to be here today and I'm glad to see you all here. Uh, my name is Olga. Uh, I represent the Career Center in the University of Utah, where I work as a career coach. Uh, today, we'll talk about what career services are available to you, international students in the U. Uh, just a little bit of background. So I'm originally from Russia, and just like you, a couple of years ago, I came to the United States. I was an F1 visa student, uh, and I came here to pursue my career and my dreams. And uh, now I help others do the same. Because of my international background, um, I work very closely with international students um, in our career center. Uh, you probably noticed um, how many offices and departments we have here on campus. Uh, when I came to the United States to do my master's, I was shocked that universities have counseling, career, wellness centers. And uh, while those departments are working really hard uh, to make your experience great, I'm sure it could be a little overwhelming to be learning all this information. So today my job um, is to introduce you to the Career Center so you know when you should come to us and what kind of help you can um, get from our center. First thing, um, I wanted to um, let you know that we support international students. That's uh, a very common misconception. Um, and I'm trying to switch to the next slide. A little bit of a delay. Um, so there is a misconception that uh, international students can't or shouldn't use career centers, and that's not true. We are happy to support any of your um, career career needs. So I'm trying to switch to the next slide. It's not working. So you can see all the services that um, we provide uh, to international students at the very bottom. So here is our agenda for today. Uh, we'll um, discuss some very common career myths around careers uh, that are common among international students. Uh, we'll talk about where you can start today. Uh, there are things that you can start doing today for your career in the United States. And we'll do a Q&A session at the end. So feel free to write down um, any of your questions. We'll, we'll be sure to answer them at the end of this presentation. So what are some common career myths among international students? And I gathered those myths from working with international students. So those are misconceptions that I hear a lot from, from the students that I work with. The first misconception is that you won't get a job because you are an international student. International students do get hired by American employers. Of course, there are certain immigration rules that you need to follow to get an internship or a job in the United States, but you can get a job. Uh, and to ensure your success in finding a job, you need to think about two things. 
first is the legal rules. And the second thing is the job search strategies. While in our office, we are happy to assist you with any job and internship search resources, the ISSS can educate you on the legal side of getting a job. So you ideally, you would be working both with an ISSS advisor and with a career coach. Your legal status comes first. Uh, so if I see a student and I feel like they um, aren't necessarily aware of the rules and regulations uh, that they have to follow because of their status, I always refer them back to the ISSS because that's the most important thing. We can advise you or on immigration or legal um, procedures. Um, like on OPT and CPT. So I would be referring you back to the ISSS, but once you know exactly what those rules and procedures are, you can come to our center. You can meet with either myself or any other career coach. Please don't feel like you are limited in your choice of career coach because career coaches because you're in international fields. You can meet with any of our career counselors um, and um, we'll be happy to assist you. So the reframe here is that you can get a job if you are proactive in working with ISSS and the Career Center. So our next um, misconception or our next myth um, is that I'll, I'll worry about getting a job once um, I graduate. Again, very common thought among international students. Uh, they don't really start worrying about their internship or job search until they uh, finish this, their school. Now, I need to let you know that American job market, even before the pandemic, was very competitive. And now with so many companies downsizing and um, the employment, like getting a job is, is pretty hard. On average, it takes uh, anywhere from two to four, sometimes even five months to get a job offer after graduation. And a job search process in the United States is pretty complex too. So first you submit your resume and your cover letter. Um, you figure out like where you will be submitting those applications. There are plenty of different job search platforms that you could be using for that. Then you connect with people, you do a little bit of networking. Um, then ideally you're invited to interview. Um, you have an interview, sometimes multiple rounds of interviews then you're offered a job, like hopefully, and then you start the negotiation process, salary negotiation process with that job offer. So this is a pretty lengthy and sometimes a stressful process. And each of these stages that I just mentioned requires preparation, especially if you're coming from a different country. For example, when I came to the United States, I learned that res American resumes are very different from what I was used to in Russia. For example, in Russia, we can include, we, we should include our photo and our marital status on our resumes, which is like a big no-no here. You can't do that. So it took me a while to figure out like, how do I write a resume? How do I build a cover letter? So it takes time, right? And then um, again, it's, it's a pretty, like it's a cultural, um, thing to get used to, you know, networking and, and how you can approach recruiters and where you can find them um, and how to interview. Um, and because of your status, and I'm sure you'll, uh, ISSS will educate you on that, but because of your uh, F1 status, you only have three months to get a job um, after your graduation. So ideally, by the time you graduate, you should have, you should be in a really good shape. Like you should have your documents ready to go. Um, it would be wonderful if you already had some experience with interviewing and we do mock interviews in our office. You can always come to us to educate yourself on like what American interviews look like. Um, you, we can practice interview with you, even if you don't have an interview, like a real interview coming up, uh, we can do a practice interview. Um, many international students come see me consistently, like we meet every two weeks and, and we um, meet those goals. Um, so, and also remember that depending on the season, um, depending on the season, we may have some limited availability in our center. So I really encourage you to come to CPDC early. 
CPTC standing for Career and Professional Development Center. So come to us early. Um, that will ensure um, that you're successful um, in your internship and job search. Um, next myth, I should only come to the Career Center when I need to find an internship or a job. So that's what many students think. Now, in reality, we do a lot more than that. If you have any career-related question or concern, we'll be happy to talk to you. And this could be like you not knowing what you want to do in the future, or let's say you start taking your classes and then you you realize that you know you, you don't you don't think you'll enjoy the field, uh, and you want to have a conversation. So wherever you are on the spectrum of I don't know what I want to do to I know exactly what what I want to do. I just need to get there. So like anywhere on the spectrum, we'll be happy to talk to you. So you you can just make an appointment and just have like a basic career conversation and and just connect with us. So you don't really need to have like a job um, that you're applying for to come talk to us. Um, so the reframe here is come with any career related question or concern. Next one is uh, pretty common too. Experience from my country does not matter. Um, in reality, all experience, including school, work, projects that you did back home, those are all valuable experiences and they should be included on your resume and included in your cover letters. Employers don't care of what part of the world you gain that experience as long as it's relevant experience. So the reframe here is that all relevant experience matters. And this is our final and most common misconception that um, your GPA is the most important factor in getting a job. Yes, your grades are important and a high GPA is going to help you um, set you apart from other students. But in reality, um, in the American job market, there are two factors that are more important than um, your GPA, and that's experience and connections. Um, what I mean by experience. So experience is, first of all, number one thing that employers are looking for uh, when they hire students for internships and for jobs. But by experience, I don't just mean the like, professional paid experience. Uh, by experience in America, we understand anything that you've been doing, your class projects, your extracurricular activities, your leadership on campus, your participation in student clubs and organization, uh, organizations, your community service, your volunteering, paid and unpaid work experience that you gained anywhere. Uh, so if you work um, in Starbucks over the summer or you work in the bookstore uh, part-time during the semester, like this is all valuable experience that employers want to see. It's just, it's all about the transferable skills that you're gaining um, it, when you're participating in student clubs and organizations. And I'm sure um, even like the university student clubs may look very differently here from what you're used to used to back home. So take your time, explore different opportunities that you can get involved on campus uh, so you can put this on your resume and uh, make you stand out from other candidates for internships and jobs. Now connections. People are your best resource in finding opportunities in the United States. I mentioned that before, US job market is pretty competitive. There are a lot of applicants for any given job opportunity. Um, there are too many candidates. So in this, situations, uh, in this situation, your connections may really help you bypass this um, stage when applicants submit hundreds of resumes. Because even if you're a great candidate, you're a perfect fit for the role, you have a beautiful, well-developed resume, but just because there may be too many applicants, you may not, your resume may not be noticed. So that's why it's so important to know people, know people on campus, know people outside of campus, uh, meet people in the industry, in your field where you're hoping to get a job. Because that one person may just take your resume and bring it to um, the right recruiter. So the recruiter will have your resume 
you know, in their hands and you'll have a chance to uh, get your qualifications and your experience to be noticed. We call it networking. And I know networking may sound like, like a scary word, but in reality, what networking is, is just getting to know people and connecting to people um, in your field. Now, where you can, and I, I said in the beginning um, of this uh, presentation, that there are things that you could do today to you know, kind of start on your career journey in the United States. In the U, we have one place where you can do anything career related, make connections, apply for internships and jobs, uh, make appointments with career coaches uh, in the career center, and that's Handshake. So that's our internal platform where employers post internships and jobs, where we advertise our career events. Uh, and let me show you how to, um, how to navigate Handshake. So you all already have accounts in Handshake because you're a University of Utah student. So you would go, you would follow this link, utah.handshake.com. And let me show you what you can do with it. It's just such a, such a great system. So you put the link, you'll see a University of Utah sign on. Um, try it one more time. You will use your University of Utah credentials, your, your UID and your password. You're gonna see, see it a little differently because I have administrator account. So that's what you're going to see. So let me show you three very important things that um, you can start exploring today. It's jobs, events, and career center. So as I said, employers who want to hire University of Utah students, they don't just go to random um, job search boards. They, go, they come to Handshake. And we uh, vet every single job, every single internship that appears on Handshake. So you won't see any like scams or you know any weird um, internships and jobs that aren't really internships. So you would go here, you would click on jobs. Um, you can filter by internships. So you'll see thousands of opportunities from a variety of different uh, fields. So you can um, you can just start exploring this. So this is the first great resource for your internship and job search. Now, don't get uh, overwhelmed if you feel like there's too much information. You can always come back to our um, center and we can show it to you again. So that's where you look for internships and jobs. Um, now, remember I talked about the importance of connections. How do you get those connections? Um, one of our big goals in the career center is to give you an opportunity to connect with employers and recruiters in a variety of different fields. So we organize some really great um, events in different industries where you can meet with recruiters and employers face to face. You can share your resume, you can uh, connect with them later on LinkedIn, uh, which is another great platform that we can show you how to use in our center. Um, so we do this great career events uh, Take some time today, explore what we're doing. Um, we do specifically hiring events. They're called career fairs every semester uh, where you show up with your resume and you just see some really great companies and you introduce yourself. Um, and again, that's something that we can work with you. We can work on what to say, how to say it, how to um, showcase your qualifications and kind of build your professional brand with American employers. Uh, but you can find all of these career related events on Handshake. Um, so I would say just, just play with the system a little bit, explore what's out there. You will really benefit uh, from using the system. And then to make an appointment with a career coach, uh, you would click here, career center, appointments, schedule a new appointment. Now, I only have a uh, master's career coaches here because um, I'm registered as a master's student, but if you're an undergraduate student, um, you will have access to, you know, our undergraduate coaches. 
So for example, like let's say you want to, you do you want to do like a resume review or cover letter. We'll click here, and then you'll have a schedule um, where you can schedule with a coach. Alternatively, you can go to our website, careers.utah.edu, and, and over here, meet the team. That's where all of our coaches are. So you'll see that I'm part of the undergraduate coaching team. So if you're an undergraduate student, you can meet with me. I work, I have two focuses in our center. I work with engineering students and international students. But again, you can meet with any coach. Like you don't really, you're not limited to any one person. Um, so that's how you can read through our bios. That's a little bit of information, our contacts. So you can explore career coaches on our website. Now we're going back to the presentation. Yeah, so Handshake is a great, a really great platform that you can start exploring um, today. So here are some action steps for you. Meet with a career coach and an ISSS advisor. Remember two aspects to your successful internship or job search, legal stuff, immigration stuff, visa stuff, and job search strategies. Um, so if you work with us both, you'll be really, really successful in this. Log into Handshake, play with the system a little bit, and attend a career event. Just see how we do how we do those career events, uh, what value you can get out of them, connect with employers. Um, if you just want to attend those events and maybe not even like actively interact with anyone, that's totally fine. Um, it's a process. So whatever works for you, um, just know that you have resources and our center is really, is really excited to be serving you. Now, before we move to um, Q&A session, I just wanted to share a student testimonial. Uh, Yelena was uh, an international student in a master's program in language pedagogy. Just one thing I need to mention. So undergraduate students have their undergraduate coaches, and then we also have graduate career coaches. So if you are a graduate student, you can um, also work with a um, with a designated career coach who specializes in like grad school. Um, so th these are her thoughts um, on working um, with a career coach. She recommends every international student who is planning to apply for a job in the United States to meet with a career coach. This is our website once again. So feel free to explore that. And this, this is my contact, my email. Feel free to email me after this presentation with any questions you have. So that's all I had to say. We'll be um, now starting to answer your questions. Thank you, Olga. That was fantastic information. Um, I did drop a few, um, a link to the Career Center website in the chat as well. So you're able to um, just access that directly. Um, if anyone has any questions, please type them into the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen um, and we'll be happy to answer them. Um, I did have one question that has come up before about the Career, the Career and Professional Development Center. Um, so you talked about all of these great services that you offer. My question is, how much does it cost to use these services that you mentioned? They are entirely free for all uh, University of Utah students. Fantastic. You are already paying for them with your fees. So they are, they are, like, you don't have to pay anything extra. Perfect. Okay, we have another question for Olga. Um, can you talk about what to bring um, or what to do at a career fair? Yes, definitely. Um, so in the past, before the pandemic, uh, we had those career fairs in person. So we would have huge union ballrooms filled in with hundreds of employers and hundreds of students. So you would typically have a like you would have a pile of your resumes and you would 
um, go from one employer to the other. Um, and the, the key here was preparation. Like you had to really know who you wanted to talk to uh, during that fair because you can't talk to a hundred employers um, and you want to specifically connect with certain employers, right? So you would, before the career fair, you would prepare, uh, you would go to Handshake and I, I can show you how to do that. Um, so you'd go on Handshake events and then career fair. And we have a, a number of different career fairs. Like if you were a STEM student, you would go to a STEM career and internship fair. Um, so in the past, like we would have them physically in person. We still have them, but they're just now online. So what you need to do, you need to pre-register for, and it's very important because um, you won't see a list of employers and sessions unless you pre-register. Uh, so you see there are group sessions, um, different companies have different group sessions. There, there are individual sessions too. So you basically sign up for those individual or group sessions. Uh, you should have your resume with you and it would be like an electronic format. Um, you do a little bit of preparation. You need to know who you're going to be talking to, what types of job, like what kind of projects they do, what kind of work they do, uh, who are they hiring? Um, and you would prepare like a short introduction about yourself. Um, we used to say like, they, they used to be called elevator pitch. Like honestly, like just like a, a normal introduction where you talk about who you are, what you're looking for, a little bit of your you know qualifications and experiences, and you just connect with them in the online session, um, and then depending you know on how that plays out, um, you're either invited to uh, an interview, or sometimes they just kind of talk in general about their company. And you can connect with these people like on LinkedIn and you know follow up and express that you're interested again in like career opportunities. So it really depends from company to company. Awesome, thank you. So we have another uh, question. It says, is a cover letter, so the student is a grad student and they're asking, is a cover letter required? And then we also had another question about business cards. Are business cards required or recommended? Mm -hmm. um, so I get this question about colors a lot. Um, so it really depends on the industry. If we are talking about like software development, IT, um, cover letters are not common in this industry. Now, my personal advice, like again, because I said job market is pretty competitive on any given job there on average, there are over 250 applicants. I think it's like 253 on average. If there is an opportunity uh, in the online form to submit a cover letter, I would always do that. Even if it's, you know, even if it's an optional thing to do because a cover letter is another chance for you to communicate your experience, your qualifications, um, your motivation to work for a specific company. I just wouldn't risk you know, not submitting a cover letter. And like maybe someone else submitted, a, like they went a, an extra mile and submitted a cover letter. And then because of that, they're invited to an interview. I would personally, I would always submit a cover letter if um, it was an option on the application form. Okay, and then what's your take on business cards? Are those still a thing or are they outdated? Um, I... I would say they aren't really um, required for students or recent grads, um, especially at career fairs. Like your resume is your most important thing. So I wouldn't worry about business cards. I mean, like for mid-level professionals at like networking events, when we were back in person, like maybe it was helpful. Um, but for now, like, don't worry about it if you are a student or your recent alum, um, your resume is most more important than uh, a business card. Great, thank you. All right, our next question is, does military experience from another country count as experience? Absolutely. It's all about how you frame it. 
right? Because um, when you think of like, is, is this experience relevant? Think of the skills that you acquired during that experience. It could be discipline, responsibility, being in charge, right? And like, how can you sell these um, skills to the potential recruiter. It's all about how you frame it. Um, so that's something that we can um, go deeper in a coaching appointment and kind of dive um, a little deeper on like how, how do you how do you show the relevance of this experience to um, a potential employer? But in short, yes, this experience is relevant. It's valuable, and you should be including it on your resume. Okay, thank you. Our next question is, how can the Career Center help me explore whether I want to stay in academics or go for jobs? If staying in academics, how do I explore my field of interest? And which fields will be great for me? Um, do guides at the Career Center, are they experts in the fields to guide me to that level? Yes, um, uh, as I said, one of the misconceptions is that we just help with resumes and colors, cover letters and interview prep. In reality, we have um, a very specific coaching appointment time. With each, it's called career exploration. Uh, it's like a 45 minute appointment where we can have like a deeper conversation on like what path, like if you're confused, if you're unsure, uh, we can talk about like what field to go and how to uh, experiment and how to, you know, figure things out. Um, so I would say uh, have a, a career exploration appointment and um, we can help you with that. Um, we have people who specialize in different areas. Uh, for example, my area of specialty is computer science, um, computer and electrical engineering and like technical field in general. Then we have people who specialize in social work, um, business and like other areas it the, I, I'm, I don't have an engineering background like i don't have an engineer degree i just have more experience with engineering students so you can come to any coach or you can pick a coach who has an area of emphasis of your interest um, and you can read our bios on our website um, we have all of those focuses listed there and you can try different coaches too like you're not limited in the number of appointments that you can have with us. Um, so yes, we can have a deeper conversation on what path to take. Um, and you can have a conversation with anyone in our campus. Thanks, that, and that's perfect because our next question is asking specifically about um, computer science. So they said, what are the skills and other aspects that an interviewer checks or expects in an applicant uh, especially in the computer science domain. So would you recommend if they're if they're in the computer science field that they meet with you specifically? Yes, yes. Um, we can definitely uh, talk, up, talk about this in detail um, at the appointment. So you can make an appointment with me. We have another career coach, Amanda Beardle. She also works with the College of Engineering students. Um, in short, um, most employers are really looking at your soft skills. Um, and I, I ask this question every time I interact with a recruiter, like what's the number one thing you're looking for in candidates? And uh, because I talk to technical recruiters most of the time, I always expect like they'll say, oh, you know, our, the candidate should be able to code in Python like I, I was expecting to hear like very specific technologies. And in reality, what they say is we really want someone with like great communication and teamwork skills. So they, they truly want to see great um, soft skills because you can train, you harder, uh, hard skills are easier to train than soft skills. And soft skills like professional communication, that's something that we can help you develop um, when you work with a career coach. So in short, communication, teamwork, flexibility, adaptability, all of those like really important soft skills. So even for like computer science students and graduates, I would say these are top skills that are in demand for recruiters. Great, thank you. 
All right, this is an interesting question. What if I want to be an entrepreneur and work on my own? How can I start working toward that goal? That's a great question. Um, I would say there are two uh, sub questions in this question, the legal and um, the strategy, right? Because again, I can't advise you on what you can do with your F1 status in terms of entrepreneurship. So I would definitely connect with an uh, ISS advisor to make sure like you are not breaking any laws um, and you know, you know what you're doing again with your visa status. Um, I also advise students who are interested in entrepreneurship in our center. Um, so we, we can meet and we can have a conversation of like what type of business you want to do and how like what idea you have and how you want to kind of organize your business. I, I have like a side uh, business uh, that I do on social media and I'm very happy to meet with any student that's uh, exploring alternative, alternative um, careers, alternative paths uh, together with their, like with their um, kind of full-time career or maybe in place of a full-time career. Um, so we can definitely have a conversation on entrepreneurship opportunities as well. Now we also have um, Lausanne um, Entrepreneurial Institute in the U. Uh, it's a great organization that has resources for um, aspiring entrepreneurs. Um, so I would just advise to also connect with them, but you can always um, start at our center. Okay, thank you. All right, this is a multi-part question here. For first year international students, what kind of jobs are legally available? Um, I'm going to stay on campus for the spring semester and I know that work study jobs are not available. It is really hard finding a job related to my major. Can I take an on-campus job that is not relevant to my course of study? This might be more of an ISSS type yes. of question, but go ahead, Olga, if you have anything to add. Yes, um, definitely. I would, um, if a student came to me with this question, I would, refer them to ISSS to make sure that like they know type of employment on campus they can qualify. Uh, and once you know that, um, we can start working with you on like how to get those on-campus jobs. Uh, because not all on-campus jobs are work study. There are other student, um, student positions that you could explore, uh, but I would, I would first advise you to talk to an ISIS advisor before talking to me. And then I'm not sure if you can answer this question in short, like what types of opportunities are available for students on um, campus? Um, for on-campus jobs, I mean, students can search for on-campus jobs just as anyone else, any other type of student would. But again, as you mentioned, it's, it's important to meet with ISSS first um, just to make sure that you're going through the correct process because working without proper authorization is can be a huge, can have really, really bad consequences for international students. So just make that the priority is to get proper approval um, from ISSS first um, before you start working. Um, you know, you can be looking for jobs, um, but just make sure you get that taken care of as the priority first. And I did put the um, email address that you can email um, to make an appointment with an ISSS immigration advisor. Um, so that's in the that's in the chat there. So you can pull that email if you want to make an appointment um, to talk with one of our advisors. Okay, we have um, two last questions. It looks like here. Um, this one is also you might get the same answer <laughs> that we just talked about. Um, I want to work for on OBT um, in the USA for some time. Um, after that, what are the chances for me to start my own business? That is very, um, I think that will be a very individualized process. Yes. Um, but I think, Olga, as you've mentioned, your office can provide a lot of resources and help with the more of the like career side of that. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. Like you can still come to us and we can talk about like your business idea and uh, what kind of business you want to do and how to do marketing and all of that. Um, but again, the legal, um, the legal procedures come first. 
Okay. Um, someone asked, will this recording be made available for review later on? Yes, we are recording and we will post this webinar as along with all of the other webinars that we've been doing for orientation. They will be on our website, on the ISSS website. So you will be able to review it later on. Um, if you have any friends that weren't able to attend live, you can share it with them as well. Um, so yes, that will be um, happening. We'll have those posted probably by the end of this week. So we'll try to get those up as soon as possible. Okay, one more question came in here. Um, it is usually seen that the H-1B process becomes easier for international students in the service industry, mainly in the IT field. Um, so if someone wishes to pursue research in any pure science field in academia or private research firms, how competitive is the job market and how is the work visa permit scenario? Is it practical for international students to get visas in the research field? This question I think probably can mostly go to ISSS, even though we do not advise on H-1B visas. Um, we only advise international student visas, so F-1 and J-1. Um, if you have questions specifically about transitioning to H-1B or what being on an H-1B visa would look like, I think we recommend that you would contact an immigration attorney. Um, we can offer some very, very, very basic advice in our office, but again, we don't advise on H-1B. Um, we just advise on F1 and J1. Um, Olga, do you have anything to add to this one? I would say um, we should probably meet for, you know, at an appointment for kind of a deeper conversation on this, on this question. Um, I mean, research field, the research like they do issue um, a lot of H1B visas and there are certain websites where you can kind of track how many H-1B visas were issued uh, by a specific company. Um, so I can share that resource with you um, during an appointment. Perfect. Yeah, that's a really specific question, but mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good question. I think a lot yes. of students are interested in research and yes. moving to H-1B. So yeah. Okay, um, well, we don't have any more questions. Um, so thank you so much to all of you for asking those questions. Those were really great and really helpful. Um, and especially a big thank you to Olga. Um, thank you for providing your expertise and your time to us today. We're so grateful. Um, and I hope that you'll be seeing a lot more international students yes. come, come your way this spring and in future semesters. And again, this, will be re this recording will be posted on the ISSS website by the end of this week. Um, as well as the other webinars we've had um, in the previous weeks. So be on the lookout for that. And again, if you have any additional questions about starting the semester or anything like that, please email us, um, the ISSS office, and we can help you. And if you have any questions related to the Career um, and Professional Development Center, you can email Olga and her, um, her contact information is still up here on the slide. So. Again, thank you so much to everyone and we wish you a great rest of your day. Bye. Thank you.